Today we've got 20 kilos of apples which we picked um, from a roadside tree. Last year didn't get many, this year we've got about 20 kilos. And they're going to go into this homemade Heath Robinson apple scratter. And the reason I'm scratching them is because the freezer's full. I usually freeze them, defrost them after a few weeks. It's broken down the molecular structure and then press them. So uh, <clears throat> because we've run out of freezer space today, scrap them up, shred them up. It's a stainless steel, by the way, that, so it's food safe. But first, I need to replace one of the elements in my little Heath Robinson. Now, when I built this, I built it in such a way that just by drilling two holes here, could put this element through, do a screw up to tighten it. It's not a screw, a nut up to tighten it. Then put one of these boxes on <clears throat> and then another nut, which is why I bought four of these so that I'd had enough spare nuts. <clears throat> now, inside it, it is completely separated from the, um, the copper itself with its own little earthing strap. I don't know whether that's showing up very well, is it? Probably a little bit better. Um, so, earthed, and then these are for the elements. Um, not the best of soldering, I think you'll agree, but it's worked. So I need to take this and this off because we've got a tiny, tiny weep from there, a little weep as you can see, um, which didn't actually weep while brewing. Uh, I left some water in there when we went away. So I'm just going to take that element out, uh, disassemble it all, <coughs> whip it out. So that's the little wiring box offed. Next I need to undo these and remove the element. Ah, oh, that's a bit of a bugger to get out. These are obviously stainless steel. Well, this bit is, this bit isn't, as you can tell. Now, I've known this for a while because, um, well, as you can see, quite badly corroded. And then I'll just give it a good clean before every brew. Um, it's only ferrous oxide, so iron, a little bit of iron. Um, and I took some advice and was told it was all right, but would I buy these again? Probably not. Um, but it's been a good, I mean, there's been a hundred or so brews done on here with that element. They are a bit of a bugger to clean, um, but get in there with a, a scotch bright pad. Yeah, so the problem, well, that's the only problem. And that just got a whole lot worse when I just left it. Um, and stains at the inside, if you can see on the inside. So that will all just wipe off with, a, again, a scotch bright. So I'm going to clean this up, clean this up, clean the inside. I might put some phosphoric acid on there just to passivate it a little bit. And then pop a new element in. Right, all wired back up. Let's give it a test. So this is earth leakage that we're interested in. That's very good. Good, good, good. We have a pass. <sighs> Get the cover back on, give it a good clean out. It's inside and then uh, fill it with water and check it. Make sure there's no leaks. It's only temporary because we are moving on to the biggies quite soon. But this one will still be used as... Um, what people at trade apparently call a pilot kit recipe development. So that's good. And turn that off. And pack all the tools away. There she is, back and working. You can see through the, um, yeah, 
the watter. There we are. So we're going to bring that up to about 80 degrees, give it all a good scrub, give everything a good caustic, then give everything a good um, sodium percarbonate and then star sand, which I think is the same as Persid 5. I don't know, probably isn't. But uh, I'm going to call the uh, call the kettle done. Next, put this together, give this a good clean, throw a bucket of star sand through it while it's working and get scratching some apules. Go out for a Sunday stroll, come back probably with about 35 kilos of apples. Let's get these weighed and washed and scratted and pressed. So I kegged cider number eight, which was the, um, the one I did with the Bernie Sanders yeast earlier today. We've got all of those apples we just picked, which is about 50 kilos, and we've got these. Now I've just given this a big clean out with, uh, let's turn this off for a minute. It's on a timer, it would have turned itself off, but I wonder how to hear myself think. So um, this is on a foot switch. And I designed this so that the height would be just about right to dump it into one of these buckets. So you can tell this isn't one I've used for a while with Bohemian Pilsner or Maris Otter Extra Pale, because I'm out of both of those, I think. Have some more coming soon. So this was all flushed out with star sand earlier. I'm going to chop these into quarters before pushing them through there, mainly because it just makes it quicker. So, uh, right, look at star sand stains. Weird, isn't it? Clean though. Is there I should imagine nearly three litres two and a half two something like that is just from shoveling this into there I haven't done any pressing yet so it's just liquid liquid draining down quite cloudy because there's a lot of uh, obviously a lot of vegetal vegetal matter in there that will clear in there you'll get a layer of sediment just natural apple pulp sediment in there. Oh, still got a load more in here to do. Wow. So I think these are the ones from, we're calling this parkway, from a tree near the parkway, near Sheffield Parkway. Right, let's get the rest of that in there and start pressing. This really is ever so satisfying, you know. Just a couple of little turns on the screw. Look at that beauty. It really is. So we've got coming up for 10 litres already. Oh, I better decant that into the bottle. One of the things I've noticed about different apples is that they've got different characteristics. When you press them, this was 25 kilos and has only returned 16 and a half. Fortunately the um, the source of them is relatively nearby so we've just been and got 
another, what do we get? Another eight kilos. So I'm about to chuck that through the scratter. These apples are really waxy, I don't know if that's the term, but they're not, yeah, you know, they're not easy to, to break up. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some of the juice out of here and pour it down to lubricate it a bit. Well, that didn't cure it. I had to get down there with a fork and unbung it. So I think the key is going to be not to chock too much down in one go. I will flush it out again. That, not bad, from eight and a half kilos. Let's get it pressed. Hmm, bit of a worry. The ciders. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This is in the call room. Eight, nine, ten. I've got ten kegs full of cider. Oh dear. Now, why do I say oh dear? Because I've also got that in there. This one hasn't, I've just taken, whoops, just kegged that yesterday, but there's another one in there. And the problem I have is I've only got two kegs left. So when those two ciders there are done, they will go in these. And then I have to wonder what I'm going to do with this lot that we picked last week and then obviously ah hang on can't get in here at the moment we've got a freezer full of these so i'm going to need at least four more kegs i've got three beers which i'm going to be doing so that's seven kegs oh i'm gonna have to contact johnny <laughs> this is the new control panel by the way um for those over there uh I'm keeping this, but I want to keep this pretty much as it is, as a pilot kit. Um, and the new, that lot over there, oh crikey, that lot over there <clears throat> is going to go on table behind. I think I mentioned that before. Anyway, whoa. so now I'm going to wrap this up. If you, uh, if you want to have a go at making some cider, I thoroughly recommend it. Um, you can use our yeasts, you can use um, wine yeasts, I've got one that I've dry hopped and I've got two ciders which are spontaneously fermented, So, uh, which obviously they're, they're reasonably sour but I quite like that in a cider. For now, that's it. Cheers everyone. Long old video.